what is this stone? Semi-precious, precious, lab created, real, it's blue. I don't know what it is. In this video, I'm gonna help you learn how to figure out what kind of stone you might be trying to research in a piece of jewelry that you've got for yourself or maybe one that you're wanting to sell on eBay, Etsy, or another platform. Hello, my name is Margaret. I am a reselling homeschooling mom that flips things that I find at estate sales, garage sales, thrift stores, on eBay and Etsy to help support my family. And one of the things I have a huge passion for is jewelry. And in today's video, we're going to be talking all about stones. Gemstones, semi-precious, precious, how to figure out what kind of stone you've got. And if this kind of video is something that you find helpful, then make sure you go down there and hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it because I'm gonna be putting out more videos helping you learn how to identify the kind of gemstones or semi-precious stones that you've got in your jewelry. So let's start with just the basic, what is a precious gemstone? What is a semi-precious gemstone? A precious gemstone is one of these four, diamond, ruby, sapphire, emerald. So those are the four precious gemstones. Pretty much everything else is a semi-precious gemstone. Now there are a few varieties here and there of say opal and a few other stones that have a precious variety. But I think especially to start with, just to focus on those four being the precious gemstones and the rest being semi-precious is a good way to start. The next part of this is breaking down whether it's a mineral or a gemstone. So how do you differentiate when you're listing a piece of jewelry as far as whether it's a mineral or it's a gemstone? Technically, gemstones are minerals. Mineral is just the more raw form, maybe it's a, a chunk of it, maybe it's even polished down, but it's not cut into a gemstone. So you could have an emerald that's a chunk of emerald that's a mineral, and then you can have an emerald that has been cut and polished and now it is ready to mount, it is a gemstone. Now there are a couple things that are considered gemstones, but they are not technically minerals, such as amber, which is a fossilized tree sap, which is millions of years old, and jet, which is derived from wood, which has changed over many years under extreme pressure. So let's say you still have this blue stone in this ring and you still have no idea what it is. You're not sure if it's a sapphire, so is it precious, or is it something else and it makes it semi-precious. So let's take a look now at ways we can start narrowing down what you've got. First, based on color, Usually when something is a darker color, it's a higher quality and probably a higher value. This can vary between different types of stones, but taking a look at the color, it can really affect the price and the quality of the stone. And also if it's a really dark stone, say a garnet, I've got a garnet that's almost black. So if you looked at it, you might think it was onyx or something like that. But if you take a light and shine a light through a really dark stone, you can see an underlying color to it. So when I shine a light through this garnet, I can see that it's actually red. So I know that that's a, a higher quality garnet stone. So when you're going to search for your blue stone, one of the things that you might need to know is the opaqueness of it. Is it opaque? where there, there's no light getting through it if you shine a light on it? Is it translucent where light comes through it but not just blaring all the way through, you can't see through it? Or is it transparent where the light shines straight through it and it, you can see through it, it's very transparent. So let's take a look at two different websites that I like to use to help me narrow down what kind of stone I might have if I'm on the hunt to figure out what I have got in a piece of jewelry. First site is called minerals.net and this one has got a mineral and a gemstone guide to this. There's things I like about this site and things that I'm iffy about, but one of the things I really like is when you select on gemstone research, let's see if I can find the right part again, they've got it where you can search by alphabetical uh, letter, but the problem, okay, here we go. There, Some of them, they just have it listed out and you can't see the different colors. So here, if you know what it is, you can come and take a peek at the different pictures. But let's say that you're not sure what it might be. 
And so you want to come over here and go to gemstones and you want to search by color and you know that it's a blue gemstone. So you select blue and then it will pull up blue gemstones. Now, as you can see, some of these look green. So they might be ones that are blue green or have a blue variety or a blueness to them. So you can scroll through and have a, a peek at what you might have in your gemstone. So like here, this is the lapis lazuli that I've been showing you throughout the video. Uh, this one would be one that you would say would be transparent. The light comes through. Now labradorite is more translucent. Some light comes through, but not all the way. All right, so there's this site. The other site is called Fire Mountain Gems. And on Fire Mountain Gems, if you scroll down, you can sort by, you know, cabochons, by gemstone beads. So let's select gemstone beads and see. Here we go. And you can come over here and select the color. So once again, we're looking at blues. And then you can see all different kinds of beads that are blue in color. And you can go through and try to find ones that look like what you've got. So those are the two sites. So once you've got your stone narrowed down, but you're not 100% sure, the next step is to have it tested, especially if you think it is something that is a higher quality. You can buy gem testers at home, and they cost about $250 to get one that's relatively accurate. I wanted to test these red stones, so let's test this one. So I'm gonna test that first stone there, and it's going all the way up to the ruby sapphire line, and it's going all the way up to that ruby and sapphire line. If that's not in the budget yet, then you can always take it to a gemologist or to a jewelry store to have them test it. So let's talk natural versus lab created. Truly, you would not be able to tell. If you were looking at a natural emerald and a lab-created emerald, they are the same molecularly. Molecularly? Molecularly, they are the same. So we at home wouldn't be able to distinguish between something that was natural or lab created. Even if you have a gem tester at home, it won't be able to tell the difference between a natural and a lab created emerald. It would register it as an emerald either way because the properties are the same. Depending on who you ask, the lab created one is not worth anything and the natural one is worth everything. But if you're really just wanting a beautiful emerald, then I don't see, I personally don't see that it matters. Now, whether something is glass or a real stone, this is something that we can discover. Let's take a look at this little blue stone. It is not even registering as glass. So it might just be a little cut glass type stone set in silver. It's definitely really pretty. At home, even if you don't have a gem tester, you can look at a stone. I had a citrine that I thought was a citrine and it, my gem tester ended up testing it as glass. I could have done this by myself at home with my loop and just looking at the stone under the loop, if there are no inclusions, which are like little scuffs and scratches and things inside the stone that make it not perfect, then chances are likely that it might be glass. Because I have a gem tester, I'm able to test that and see, oh, it's not an actual citrine, it's testing is glass. And then after you've done all of this, if you're still stuck, I have a Facebook group called Texas Gals Jewelry Lovers where we help each other learn more about jewelry. And if you get stumped, even after all of this, we've got great people in our group that help us identify what different kinds of stones are. Thanks so much for coming over and watching this. If you've got any more tips for how to identify minerals, gemstones, semi-precious or precious, then leave a comment down below and I will see you on the next one. Bye.